Hello and welcome to Aero Angler's YouTube channel. Today we're looking at this Robin HR200's exhaust system. The aircraft's in for a 150 hour check and I've just spotted what looks to me like some blow by just there where I'm pointing. That's the sort of white deposit, don't know how well the camera can pick that up really. Um, but it's a sign that there's exhaust gas leaking out of the exhaust can which is particularly dangerous there because it's right near the cabin heat exchanger and any exhaust gases leaking there could result in the carbon monoxide being leaked into the cabin. So sure enough I'm taking some scat hoses off here that's the ram air scat hose so that that scat hose uh, forces air to circulate around the exchanger so whether you're applying heat to the carburetor or the cabin there's a flow of air to push that warm air around. So that scat hose is disconnected and I shall just go around now and take the other scat hoses off this one here is the carb heat very important if that scat hose was disconnected obviously you wouldn't be able to get any carb heat to the carburetor which could result in the carb icing up and the engine stopping so we always pay close attention to those scat hoses in particular so that scat hose is now coming off and I think the next shot will be me just undoing the exhaust stud nuts It's always a good idea to have these exhaust systems off regularly. If nothing else, it just runs the threads down on these exhaust studs. We have seen some aircraft where the exhaust system hasn't been dismantled for a very long time, and you end up winding the exhaust studs right out of the cylinder itself, which would then result in having to put overside studs in, etc., which is a real pain in the backside. So um, I'll probably skip a little bit here, I should think. Being careful to catch the washers there as well. Keeping an eye out at the exhaust flanges as well. We don't want to see any blow by on there either because that will erode the exhaust, uh, sorry, the cylinder flange, which again would mean you would have to take the exhaust studs out and redress that flange. Um, okay. So now, because of the way this exhaust is situated I will have to undo these two Jubilee clips just here and here um, and slide the exhaust out sideways just a bit of a jiggle we should be able to pop him straight out just like that Just taking the gaskets off the cylinders there so they don't fall on the floor. They'll be replaced with new ones anyway. Often on exhaust systems, if you do get a tight stud or something seized, heat can be your best friend. However, in this case, I didn't need to do that. They came out fairly easily. So now I can slide that whole system out through between the airbox there and the engine. Okay, so I'm just looking at the cylinder flanges there, making sure there's no signs of any blow by on there. If they don't look too bad, we'll give them a quick clean up, make sure everything's nice and clean, like that one. So you get a good surface for your gasket to fit to. All looks good so far. Also as well, check the gasket faces on the exhaust itself. We'll give those a clean up too. Right, so now I need to take the uh, cabin heat, or the carb heat, it does both, exchanger off the exhaust so it's this kind of uh, shroud that's fitted around the exhaust can here just three jubilee clips I think maybe a bit of time lapse is in order here Oh, 
Okay, so just about got all the Jubilee clips off now. And I shall just uh, now have a look to see exactly where these um, exhaust shroud covers split. They come apart in two halves. So I just want to have a look, make sure I'm putting on the right part here first. And again, these are quite tight. Um, so a little bit of uh, persuasion, shall we say, is needed. However, you should never force anything. If it won't come off or undone, there's usually a reason why. And you can often do more damage by forcing things and putting screwdrivers and crowbars. You know, it's, it's not good practice at all. So just carefully jiggling and prising the half off there. You can see there's one half off. One of the few days uh, this January that we've managed to not have the heater on in the hangar, and you've probably heard the workforce whistling away earlier, like spring birds. Anyway, back to business. So now I'm going to have a look at the whole of this uh, exhaust can here, because obviously I'm pretty sure I found a perforation, but um, got to make sure that it's sound everywhere else as well. So what I'm doing now with the screwdriver is what we call the tap test. And uh, you can often hear the tone difference of the tap. Um, if there's an eroded part of material there, it will become a lot duller. So yeah, there's, there's my hole and I'm just tapping up to it now. See if we can hear it. Yeah, well, I think Aidan heard it. He was pretty quick to come over and have a look. Another welding job for Aidan there. He's, our, um, he's a qualified welder, actually, so he does all our exhaust repairs. Also a very skilled man with the lathe and the, and the mill as well for making tools, etc. It's very useful. So here we go. Just got a spike now. And you can see there that the can has perforated. You can also see there on the side a previous repair that Aiden carried out. You can't see it at the moment, we're just trying to focus on this hole here. There we go. So, yep, that's going to need repairing. Nice to spot them early like this before they're a massive hole, but again, you don't want any uh, carbon monoxide getting into the cabin. And there's the previous repair I was just talking about as well. So over to the welding bench. Um, obviously, it's no good just trying to weld up that tiny little pinhole there. You know, the material is obviously eroded away and we need to get all of the weakened material out which is what Aidan's doing there. So just cutting it back until he, he finds good metal again. It's definitely got a hole in it now, eh? Definitely got a hole in it. <laughs> right, okay, so he's just tacking on his new piece of material there, getting it into position. Uh, worth mentioning at this point, Aiden has actually got his own YouTube channel called Fram Avia. That's F R A M A V I A. And uh, on his channel, he goes a lot more in depth than what I'm capable of doing um, about his welding processes, machining processes, very interesting. So go and check that out if you uh, if you want. So he's just having a practice run there. I 
I'm actually learning to TIG weld myself now with the help of Aiden. So uh, again, that's my first welding lesson is on Aiden's YouTube channel. So if you fancy a giggle, go and watch that. So here we go, it's finished. You can see the uh, old repair meeting the new repair there. A nice, neat job. Let's see what Aiden thinks of it. It's getting tired, but it will go a few more months until annual. There are a bit of copper in the vice here and some gloves just to protect it from arc strikes because it's branded with the bench. It uh, didn't go too badly. Looks good to me. Mm, not too bad. <laughs> Okay, so I thought I'd just finish up here with a still shot of the exhaust repair Aiden carried out there. Um, worth mentioning as well that we pressure tested this exhaust can after Aiden had finished repairing it, just to make sure there weren't any pinholes that were too small for the eye to see or something that we missed. Um, unfortunately, my camera had run out of memory and battery, and uh, quite frankly, we needed to get the job done. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we, we will video a pressure test later on on another video so that's all for today guys and um, thanks for watching please like share and subscribe and uh, we'll keep the videos coming see you soon